Good morning. I'm Treyon White, Senior Council Member and the Chair of the, of the Committee on Recreation, Libraries, and Youth Affairs. Today is Monday, November the 21st, 2022. We are meeting remotely using the Zoom platform. The time is now 12.05 p.m. and I'm calling to order this public roundtable on the committee. Today, we will be reviewing the following resolution, PR 24-1049, the Director of Office of Cable Television, Film, Media, and Entertainment, Latoya Foster Confirmation Resolution 2022. Please note that PR 24-1052, Board of Library Trustees Ashley Davis Confirmation Resolution have been has been withdrawn. I also want to take time to give my condolences and love to our friend, uh, Ms. Foster, the passing of her mother, um, who we relate to rest tomorrow. Again, we thank you for your services and your mom's services to the district. And we appreciate you, you know, coming on today. And even you, we was trying to reschedule, but you said, no, you want to do it anyway. So that's a lot of courage and we appreciate you. And we wish you uh, um, love and, and peace during this time. With no action, the resolution will be deemed, will be deemed approved on February 22nd, 2022. However, this committee's practice to hold roundtables on nominees for agencies under the committee's jurisdiction before they take office. The mission of Office of Cable, Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment is to produce a broadcast and programming for the District of Columbia's public, educational, and government access, cable channels, and digital radio stations, regulate the District of Columbia's cable television service providers, and also provide customer service for cable subscribers and support sustainable creative eco economy and a labor market for the District of Columbia. There are no public witnesses that have signed up for today, so now we just have our government witness, uh, Mr. Toya Foster. Mr. To Ms. Foster, do you have an opening statement? I do. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman White. Oh, yeah, let me swear you in. It's the practice of this office of swearing all out. Government witness, you can start by raising your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under the penalty of, per penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth and nothing but the whole truth? I do. Thank you, go right ahead. Chairman White, first and foremost, I wanna say good afternoon to you and thank you for your love and condolences and your friendship. And good afternoon to uh, any of the council members who may decide to join uh, today, as well as the staff of the Committee on Recreation, Libraries and Youth Affairs. Uh, as stated, I'm Latoya Foster. Uh, I'm the acting director of the Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment, uh, often called OCT-FME. Uh, as a native Washingtonian and proud resident of Ward 5, I am truly honored beyond measure uh, to have been nominated by Mayor Bowser to lead the Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment. I thank her for both this prestigious nomination and her faith in me to lead this agency. And again, I also wanna thank you again, Chairman White, for holding this hearing today. And I welcome the opportunity to discuss my background, my experience and my vision for this agency and how it will be positively impactful for residents across all eight wards of our great city. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself uh, and my career. Uh, I was originally introduced to the worlds of music and entertainment uh, through my parents. I'll start with my father first, uh, who's a third generation Washingtonian. Uh, he was a nightclub owner and promoter back in the day. Uh, one of his former clubs actually we know today as the Improv. Uh, and then my mother played a ginormous role in my exposure to radio and entertainment through a family friend. Uh, and that led me to spend summer after summer attending major radio and music conferences, such as the Jack the Rapper convention. Uh, I spent my teen years meeting radio executives and that allowed me my first opportunity to broadcast on the air when I was 15 years old. Uh, those exposures paved the way for me to launch my career in broadcast and communications uh, for over 25 years. Uh, as you know, uh, since 2019, I've served as the communications director in the executive office of Mayor Bowser, uh, where I serve as the chief spokeswoman for Mayor Bowser and the Bowser administration uh, by providing on the record statements to local and national media outlets, as well as leading strategic and crisis communications efforts. I also serve as a resource and provide direction to nearly 100 district government agency communications departments, editing and reviewing internal and external correspondence, such as media advisories, press releases, statements, graphics, and social media posts. 
Prior to becoming the Director of Communications, I also served as Press Secretary for Mayor Bowser from 2015 to 2017 and Deputy Communications Director of Media Relations from 2017 to 2019. In those roles, I've interfaced daily with the media to promote various government programs and initiatives, including coordinating events and media interviews for Mayor Bowser and other administration officials. I've developed and maintained relationships and worked closely with local news stations and stakeholders to develop partnerships with the objective of increasing community awareness. Uh, very similar to you, Councilmember White, uh, I had uh, Mayor Marion Berry, our dear mayor for life, as a mentor, friend, and boss uh, from 2012 to 2014, as I served as his director of communications and official spokesperson. And in that role, I spearheaded Mayor Berry's communications efforts, uh, as well as his community and stakeholder engagement. And I was critically involved in uh, the opportunity of a lifetime, which was helping him chronicle his life and his autobiography, The Incredible Life of Marion Berry. And as we all know, what an incredible life it was and an extraordinary opportunity for me, uh, where I gained so much knowledge. Uh, and again, it was just a tremendous experience. In that role, I also ex executed crisis management and damage control and reputation management. Now, going into my broadcast career, uh, my career includes television and radio broadcast and production experience. Uh, for many years, I served as the host and executive producer of In The Know, which was a weekly public affairs program that aired on our ABC affiliate here in Washington, D.C., WJLA 7 and News Channel 8. In that capacity, I booked and interviewed talent, uh, and I say everyone from the hood to the hill. Uh, I developed programmatic elements and promoted the telecast. My experience in that role and popularity with the program uh, allowed me the honor of a lifetime as well to interview not one, but two future US presidents, President Joseph Biden and President Barack Obama. And a slew of local and national political business leaders, entertainers, and professional athletes. As a matter of fact, I fostered strong relationships with members of this very council while hosting the program. I also served as host and executive producer of another television program called This Is Your Moment, which was a weekly inspirational program that aired on the Word Network, uh, cable television network. It's the largest Christian broadcasting network in the world. It reaches 90 million households as well as penitentiaries uh, across the country. I also have extensive radio experience. I've launched several programs uh, on the Radio One Network, including Live at Five, which was an afternoon drive time program, daily program, the Washington Insider and the Power Block, which all aired on the Radio One Network. As we know, that is the largest urban broadcasting company in the world, launched by D. Kathy Hughes, where she started right here on 4th and 8th Street and took one radio station, WOL, and turned that into over 60 radio stations across the country. I also, uh, um, launched another radio program, uh, Voice of the City, which premiered on DC Radio 96.3 HD4 in 2016. And that is a part of the Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment. So all of these experiences have allowed me to provide a voice to our residents, to be a connector and a liaison, if you will, between the community and our government. And these experiences, my commitment to excellence and strong community ties, I believe make me poised and ready on day one to lead the Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment. Uh, I can go on to talk about my vision for an Office of Cable Television. Council Member White, is that okay? Sure, two more minutes. How, how many more? Two. Two, I'll make it quick. Okay, here we go. So the mission of the Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment is to produce and broadcast programming for the district's public educational and government access cable channels and digital radio stations, regulate the District of Columbia's cable television service providers, and provide uh, customer service for cable subscribers and support a sustainable creative economy and labor market uh, in the District of Columbia. Uh, the Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment accomplishes this mission in part by operating television networks, digital radio stations, television and video production and creative 
initiatives. If confirmed, I will lead the very talented team of the Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment in providing top-notch and innovative programming and develop initiatives to, to support the district's creative economy. I pledge to do so on the, digital, uh, the district's digital radio, looking for opportunities for district agency leadership, council members such as yourself, Council Member White and others, and ANCs and others to use this network to provide valuable updates and share plans and discuss agency services. Under my leadership at the Office of Cable Television, uh, the Office of Creative Affairs, I will work feverishly with our economic development cluster agencies, including the Department of Small and Local Business Development, Events DC, the Commission on the Arts and Humanities to promote the district as a hub and destination for creatives. This includes programs like 202 Creates, which we just finished celebrating, Art All Night, and more to come. I will also spend considerable time promoting the district as a premier destination for creating, shooting, and producing television series and movies. And by this, I mean actually filming right here here in our great city and not just B-roll of the monument or the Capitol Dome, but this filming will take place right here in the nation's capital and it will have a tremendous impact on our local economy as those productions will hire extras who live right here in our city across all eight wards, use DC-based sound technicians, film engineers, hairstylists, makeup artists, and other creatives. And it is my hope and quest, Council Member White and others, that in the near future, in the credits of more motion picture and television series, and other productions that the DC Office of Cable Television, Film, Music and Entertainment will be listed in all of those great credits. And in conclusion, again, I am honored and excited about the opportunity to lead OCTFME. I am beyond grateful and humbled to Mayor Bowser for nominating me. I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to thank and acknowledge the small and mighty team of the Executive Office of the Mayor's Communications Office, uh, which I have led and been a part of for the past eight years. Those dedicated public services servants, I'm sorry, who worked diligently uh, many long hard hours through holidays, pandemic, natural disasters, community events to make sure our city is running uh, at its best. I thank you from the bottom of my heart and to my new OCT FME team, uh, the two-time Emmy award-winning team. I am so looking forward to working with you, each one of you to continue the great work of the agency uh, and all that you have accomplished and more greatness to come and again, Kudos to uh, my predecessor, Director Angie Gates, uh, for laying the infrastructure and doing an amazing job. And Mr. Chairman, thank you again for this opportunity to testify today. And I look forward to answering any questions you might have. Thank you. Um, first, uh, are you a district resident? And if confirmed, do you plan on residing in the district during the duration of your appointment? Yes. Thank you. Have you been, or are you currently a member of any District of Columbia board or commission? No. Okay. Are you an attorney? No. Okay. Do you have, or any of your immediate family members have any interest, financial or otherwise, that may directly or indirectly pose a conflict of interest with the performance of your duties? No. Okay. Do you have any outstanding liabilities? No. Taxes, other payments to the district, federal, state, or local? No. Government that are contested or uncontested? No. Okay. Okay. Um, this is the final note for this round table. If anyone could not testify, would like to submit written testimony. Uh, you can do it through email at ryA at dccouncil.gov. The official record will close November the 28th at 5.30 p.m. With no other business before us um, and no other public witnesses, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Thank you, have a blessed day. Thank you too, thank you all so much.